is Bill Ohms. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to use a computer to simulate a Rose engine pattern in a three-dimensional model. When we start the software, we see three main windows. On the right, with a black background, is a window defining the outline of the shape. Below that is some information about the thickness of the shape, information about the cutter that we'll be using. On the upper left, we see a 3D view that we can roll around and look at from different angles. And below that is a data window that we'll talk about in more detail later. So let's start with a simple bowl shape. In the outline window, we first clear all the other points and then simply double click to add a point. As we add points, we'll see that we have a curve fit between them. We can move the points around. We can add additional points. And uh, in between each of the points we click on, we can see a curve fit shape. If we want to get rid of a point, we simply drag it off the screen and it goes away. Notice that as we move the points around in the 3D view, it constantly updates it to reflect the shape that we're making. So let's start with a simple bowl shape. We have three points defining a shallow bowl. It's about two inches uh, in radius and about an inch high. When we change the radius of cutter to something more typical, like uh, in my case, the cutter is a half inch, we see the white line represents where the cutter will be. The purple line indicates the inside shape of the bowl and the brown orange line represents the outside shape of the bowl. In this case, I've set the bowl to be a tenth of an inch thick. To add cut points to the shape, we go to the bottom and select Edit Cut Points. Now we're going to be editing where the points are going to be. Double clicking instead of adding a outline point, we'll add a cut point that we see here. The cut point generally snaps onto the white line, which is where the cutter needs to be to where it just barely touches the surface. You can see that on the light dotted yellow line. The green and yellow arcs represent the deflection of the cutter as it's cutting back and forth into our work. We can change the kind of rosette we're using in the data window. For example, I'm going to use a flower shaped rosette. I'm going to change it to 16 repeats or 16 bumps. The depth is going to be 50 thousandths of an inch and the peak to peak on the rosette will be 0.05 as well. Now in the 3D window, we can see the kind of pattern that we would see in that bowl. If we move the point to where the green line just touches the center, as we see right there where the arrow is, then we'll know that the cut is just barely touching the center, which is typically what we want to see. Notice in the 3D view, our pattern is barely meets in the middle of the bowl. If we double click to add another point, then we can line up the position of the point such that the two green lines just touch on the inner surface as we notice right here where the arrow is pointing. That's the optimum placement. If we look in our 3D view, we can see that we don't have any flat spots because the cuts are just touching. Now we can proceed to add additional cut points. Each time we want to line it up so that the green arcs just barely touch as we see right there. Add another point. Again bring the green lines to where they just touch. Add another point. The green lines just touch right there. And one last point. And now we can see our 3D view of the bowl. We have nice concentric patterns. All of the cut points are the same. Once we have this done, we can save this in a file. We can print out the 3D view. We can print out a listing of all of these cuts and where they're located. For the top of a cylindrical box, all it takes is two points to determine the profile as a straight line. Add the cut points and then we can see the resulting shape. We can use pumping motion rather than just rocking motion simply by selecting that our rosette is a pumping style rosette rather than a rocking style rosette. That gives us some quite different patterns than you could get with simple rocking motion. Model a cylindrical box with cutting on the side. Our outline is just simply a straight 
vertical line defined by two points. Then we can add various cut points. And here we see a simple pattern repeated along the edge of the curve. Of course, we don't have to limit ourselves to straight edges. Any kind of curve can be modeled and we can put as many points around the shape as we want. In this case, decorating a simple onion dome shape. We can even implement complex spiral shapes and then render them in detail. It doesn't matter if you're using an inexpensive MDF Rose engine, a restored Holtz Apple, or a state-of-the-art computer-controlled ornamental lathe. You'll find that simulating your patterns in advance will improve your work and give you the creativity you need to create new patterns. For more information, see my website, software.billowns.com. Thank you.